I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. So you're engaged. Congratulations. Now, add this item to the wedding planning list. Consider making your wills. Estate planning for the recently engaged couple, not married, engaged, is somewhat of a challenge. It's something that is often not even considered and overlooked and I would say even by financial advisors yet it really matters as I have seen in my own practice. Ken is someone that I had known since childhood. He came to me as a client when he was in his 40s and recently engaged. The wedding date was a year away. Ken's family was quite successful and he personally owned a large income producing commercial property that did quite well. As we discussed his estate planning desires, I learned that he had no will, but intended to have one drawn after the wedding. His fiance worked with him in managing the commercial property, which he wanted her to inherit. It was important to him that she would be provided I asked him, Ken, if you were to die today, would you want her to have the property even though you're not married? He said, yes, I would. He also pointed out that the chances of him dying today weren't that great, and he didn't want to double the cost of drawing up a will now and then having to redo it again after they were married. I reminded him, that wills are for today, not tomorrow. And that it was really important that he get a will drawn now before they were married. Dying without a will in South Dakota meant his family would inherit the property and his fiance would receive nothing. He was clear that this was not what he would want to happen and he said he would get an appointment with an attorney. A few weeks later we had a follow-up meeting and I said, uh, Ken, have you gotten your will drawn? He says, so. no, I didn't get it done and he promised me that he would set the appointment. A few months later I got word that Ken was in the hospital in grave condition. He had advanced stage cancer. Before I could help him do anything about his estate planning, Ken died. He had never made the will. His family inherited his commercial property and his fiance didn't get a nickel from his estate. Ken really wanted her to be provided for and inherit the property. That was not accomplished. I've often wondered if Ken was agreeing to have a will drawn more to placate me while inwardly resisting the unnecessary expense of drawing a will twice, once before marriage and once after. It certainly will cost more money to plan for the distribution of an estate before and after a marriage. There's no question for that. For younger couples with very few assets, this is likely to be an unnecessary expense. There's <laughs> basically nothing to give away, right? It is a worthwhile and wise precaution, however, for those who marry later in life, who have been married previously, or who have been financially successful. And I think it's especially important for couples who may have invested time or money in one another's property or businesses that are not jointly owned. I think in that case it, it uh, makes it even more painful event to, to not have been included. I encourage uh, engaged couples to have meaningful conversations about their finances the estate planning aspects of those conversations are likely to focus on what needs to be done after the wedding. Rarely do people
consider that they may need to take some uh, state planning steps to consider what happens before the marriage. True, engagements sometimes fall apart. In that event, a prenuptial would need to be changed. It's still a good idea to consider making one. The bottom line is that if you would want your fiancé to have any property or portion of your estate, it's wise to formulize that intent in writing with the necessary documents to carry out your wishes. Thanks for listening.